Right, this uh, is a little video about the varroa treatment that I've been doing. Um, now the hive, uh, last year in autumn I did a thymol treatment and this is a new hive from a package of bees that I bought last year. Um, I missed the Christmas uh, oxalic acid treatment where there was no brood, um, unfortunately, but I'd have thought with a thymol treatment and a new pa and it being a new package of bees last year that the varroa count would be quite low. Um, but now in spring I found that the varroa count was very high, high enough that it needed treatment. Unfortunately it's got brood so I can't just do drizzle oxalic acid um, or something like that. It needs to be a treatment that penetrates the brood because once there's brood I think it's a majority, uh, two thirds or something like that of the varroa in the hive is actually in the brood. So if you kill all the varroa on the bees, it doesn't make that much difference because as soon as the new bees hatch, you get a whole load of uh, more varroa. Um, it's been too cold to use treatments like thymol and um, uh, max, max thingies, which is a evaporating uh, acid. Um, so those were out. Posting on a forum, I found out about um, using vaporized oxalic acid. That vaporized oxalic acid doesn't kill in the cells, the varroa in the cells. However, it's mild enough of a treatment that you can do it multiple times. Whereas drizzled oxalic acid, um, if you drizzle it on the bees, the, the concentration of acid on the bees is actually higher so it's a more stressful thing for the bees and you can't repeat it as often um, but because the vapor vaporized oxidic acid is a very uh, thin layer everywhere in the hive and all the bees it's not too concentrated so you can do it multiple times so if you do that three times at five day intervals so one treatment another five days another treatment another five days another treatment that catches all the, the varroa on the bees. As the new bees come out, uh, it catches those, and then it catches another lot. So it should pretty much uh, uh, deal with the varroa population in the hive. Now, so that that was great. So I ordered a, um, a vaporizer from eBay because they're ridiculously expensive if you buy them from the uh, beekeeping shops. Um, and one of the problems that, that I had to overcome, uh, that was the main issue, is I use a polystyrene hive. And because the uh, vaporizer gets to an extremely high temperature, uh, it's been advised that you don't use them with polystyrene hives. So my first thought uh, was to use the vaporizer underneath the uh, burrow mesh. So I put it uh, so this is the vaporizer. You put the oxalic acid in the bowl there, and then it heats up and it turns it into vapor. So what I did was I put it underneath here, underneath the hive like that, so it's underneath the mesh, and then sealed around it with uh, some uh, plastic wrapping, uh, plastic sheeting, which is actually easy enough once we got it set up. Uh, however, uh, the first time I did it, uh, I came back after the treatment and checked and the oxalic acid was all distributed around here. So what I initially thought was that I was pumping, uh, pumping too much electricity through the uh, vaporizer and that was making it spitting the, the uh, sort of powdery acid out rather than gently turning it into a vapour. So I got a less powerful battery. I was using a, bat a battery starter, battery charger uh, for the first one. I used, on the second try, um, a couple of days later, a lower power battery. Again, put it underneath the a uh, bro mesh and did it. And exactly the same thing happened. Now, the second time though, I had a good look and I looked underneath and there was oxalic acid crystals hanging off the varroa mesh. 
So, thankfully, I looked. Basically, what was happening was it was turning into a, a vapor correctly from the vaporizer. Um, the vapor was going up. It was hitting the grower mesh, losing all its heat, recrystallizing, and then hanging off or dropping down. So, uh, basically, you can't use a vaporizer under a grower mesh. Uh, depending on the metal or whatever, uh, some of the vapor may go through. However, I don't think you can really say um, if it's going to be a correct, if it's really going to do the hive, the full hive, because it might lose it, not quite enough temperature um, for it to recrystallize, but enough that it sort of recrystallizes low in the hive and doesn't reach percolate all the way through. So that plan A was out. Um, plan B, I got some heat uh, reflecting. Um, material from eBay, uh, really cheap. It's basically uh, glass fiber coated on both sides with aluminium. Now, what I tr I tested on on this, I basically put the put the the uh, stuff in like that, and and then put that on top of the uh, fabric. So, and I did a test of that uh, on this, not in the hive, and it didn't heat up anywhere around it. I'm not sure if it would be an issue um, with the Varroa mesh, if it was just sitting on there, if it would heat, it, heat the mesh up enough. Possibly, possibly not. Probably not. Um, but the, one of the main um, problems would be pulling it out of the hive and if it's still hot it could melt this bit as you pull it out of the hive however with this as I pulled it out of the hive uh, it's safe because it um, it does transfer the heat through but it transfers it slowly so pulling it like that is not going to leave enough heat here um, to melt this I, I tested that by um, uh, just after it's cooled a bit having a feel uh, and it, what it, the, the heat, heat did come through, um, but slowly. I'm not sure if if you had a um, if you had a polystyrene hive with a perfectly flat bottom without the varroa mesh, and you using it so like this, and it was flat down on that with the heat reflecting fiber flat onto polystyrene. Um, it may get too hot and start to melt, potentially. Um, it's something you could test, but you can, what you can do is lift the, the end of the vaporizer up a bit so that only one edge is touching. Um, so I, I suspect that if you did that, even with the fiber and even with a uh, just straight on to polystyrene, it would be okay heat-wise, but I'm not sure. So anyway, um, uh, after testing that, I used it on the hive, and it worked perfectly. Worked really well. It's a really easy thing to do. Um, all you do is you stick the, the fiber in, stick the the um, vaporizer in, and then plug the entrance to the hive with some um, some fabric that's damp so that as soon as any of the, you know, you bung it up well and also if any of the vapour touches it, it's just going to recrystallize or um, and lose all its heat. Uh, you can, you put a, um, what's it called, a varroa sort of tray underneath the hive, underneath the uh, varroa mesh, just to help um, seal off that bit, but also since the vapors inside it's going to rise because of the heat as it loses heat it's going to recrystallize but also if it goes further down it's going to lose the heat on the varroa mesh as it did underneath so you're not going to get any real escape in there um, and then just on the top uh, uh, where the different layers meet um, you can sort of seal that with uh, some uh, cling film uh, depending on how 
how much you need it to be perfectly sealed. In an urban environment, I'd like to go over the top and make sure that the neighbours don't have uh, any disturbance with the smell of obviously the casket or anything like that. Um, so just sealing it up with cling film works really well. But the, uh, the first treatment's done, I'm going to do the second treatment this evening when they all come in after finish flying, um, because you want to catch as many as you can. And then one more treatment after that, and then I can get my queen, new queen, and split the hives and get two hives this year, which will be fun. So I might do a video of um, just showing you uh, the, the treatment of the, uh, uh, this evening. There's not much to see though, and it gets a bit dark, so I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I hope uh, that's useful to people. Uh, certainly, yeah, I could have used that knowledge <laughs> before I started messing around. So yeah, see you later. Right then, here we go. So here is the uh, vaporizer with the oxyl acid in. I'm just gently stick the collection fiber in. Get it in nice and deep so it's definitely over the, the mesh. Fill in the hive entrance with damp cloth. It's all nicely uh, uh, all sealed with the uh, cling film. And I'm not sure on this. Just stick it to the battery and go inside. And that's it, basically. Go inside, wait for three minutes. Uh, turn it off, let it cool for 10 minutes, come back and take it out, and job's a good one.